So once in a while, when we're looking through old vintage photographs, illustrations, and posters, we come across something that we really like. Here, for example, I'm on the DC Library at Northwestern EDU, and I'm looking at an old Army propaganda poster. And when I zoom in, you can see it's a pretty high quality scan. However, it's an actual poster. So you can see there's fold lines on it because this was an original, like real life poster. This is not just a digital image. It's an actual photograph of a poster. So in this video, I'm going to show you a couple tips and tricks in Photoshop you can use to help clean up these lines. And I've got a couple cheats that you can use as well so that you can make this passable if you're selling this or if you're using this as artwork in your home or for a project. All right, I hope you're having a great day. I'm in an old version of Photoshop. I'm in CS2, which is ancient old. It was probably built by the Egyptians along with the pyramids. But I do get feedback on this YouTube channel that people have older versions as well. And so this is helpful. Now, if you're in a newer version of Photoshop, the tips and tricks that I'm gonna show you do apply as well. Now, here's a rookie mistake that people will often use. They'll open their file and they will open up their image. So now I'm just working off of my Lumber War poster. And as I'm making my changes and everything, I'm just going to save the image. That's one option. I don't want to say it's a mistake, but a, a better way to do it is to create the palette that you want. So for example, 16 by 20 inches, 300 pixels per inch. This would be standard if you were creating high-end artwork for sale on a website. 16 by 20 is my palette size. And then what I'll do is I'll place the image inside the palette. So now I'm working off of my defined space. And as I work through this, I can now have a background that I can see as well. So the reason that I think this is helpful is that if you're working away on something, you've now got a layer underneath that you can work on and you've got it now defined to the size that you want to use for your final. So this is important, for example, if I wanted to remove the black outline. So this is the first thing that I'll show you is a very easy way you can do it is you can just use the little eraser tool on the left and there's a magic eraser tool. It'll ask me if I want to rasterize the image, which is fine. It just means it's making it a true picture. And then I can use a little crosshairs. I'm selecting the caps locks button and I can just simply select the crosshairs, click on the black and that will remove the black now around the image. That's one way to clean up an image. Here's the other piece. See the little cream colored around the army needs more lumber? Well, what I can do if I wanna make this to resize it is rather than try to match it, I can just remove it all together. So I'm just gonna, again, using the magic eraser tool, I'm just gonna select that piece and now it's removed everything except for the text. Now I'll clean it up by selecting the eraser tool and I'll go around and I'll just remove that tiny little outline all the way around. And if you're really trying to get sticky on where to go here, like maybe I don't want to you know, manually run along, just use the selection tool and then you can just select a space and then you can just use the arrow keys and you can be super accurate about it. So I'm just moving my little army ants box right up, selecting delete and now I've deleted that. I'll do the same thing here at the top. I'll just create a little rectangle. I'll click delete. That removes any of that pesky little outline that I've got. Now what I can do, okay, I've removed everything. So now what I can do is I can just create a layer underneath the poster and I can make it whatever color I want. Now I could say fill it with black or cream color if I want, just using the paint bucket. So I'm just gonna fill my layer underneath with black. And now when I put my poster on, now I've got black. Now you can see I still need to clean up some of the text and I still need to clean this up here on the corner, but at least I'm, I'm off to a good start. I'm basically removing the old background and I'm replacing it with a pure background. That's one option. You don't have to do that, but that's one option. The other option is you can just select some sort of a cream color and then you can pick that as well as your background. So this is really good if you're making variant posters. Now I'll just go into the actual poster layer 
and I'll use the magic eraser tool and I'll remove the little cream color inside the text. I'll do actual pixels. I'll scroll on down and you'll see here I've got this little thing here. Now if you're having trouble with this with this eraser, there's a tolerance at the top. So if I make the tolerance too much, it'll remove more than I want. And if I make the tolerance too little, it will remove too little. But I got it sitting at 50, which is my standard, and it seems to be working good. Now if I wanted to use the actual background, before I delete this last little piece, I'll just use my eyedropper tool and I'll select that. And that gives me the actual background color that I was using originally and I'll just go to the layer and fill that layer with that color. So now that's the color that I want to use. But see how much cleaner it is? There's no granular graininess, whereas here inside the R there is. So I'm going to remove that little piece on the poster and you can see how it, it instantly becomes a bit more clean. Another little tip, I'm not going to do it in this video, but another little tip is when you've got logos, so for example, this is a US Army logo, you may just want to get the old eraser tool out, just completely erase it, zoot, get rid of it completely, and then just replace it with an actual Army logo. So just go online, go to Wikipedia, find the Army logo, and just put it in there. I do that a lot of time with comic books as well. The Comics Code Authority box, this little stamp that goes on old comic books, I just remove it completely and just replace it with a high-res digital copy, and it makes it much cleaner. Another way you can clean up the letters here, we'll move on to the letters, is you can just fill with the color. So I'm going to use the little eyedropper tool. I'm just going to pick on the color inside the letter. So I'm just going to pick random right there. And then I'm going to just paint with the paint bucket. I'm going to fill the actual letter with the same color. And see how much cleaner it looks now? The E on the left has a gradient and the one on the right is just pure. Now again, it's personal preference. You may want to have vintagey look and feel to the letters, but if you don't, then you just simply click fill them in and you can make them, I think, look really nice. You know, they look, it looks newer. As you're going through, you just want to make sure you're removing any little pieces of like remember when we moved the background there might be a couple little pieces left over okay so now we're going to get into these fold lines fold lines are a little bit annoying right because here you can see there's a fold there's a fold along the left the fold like up and down left and right so when you want to what you want to do with these is use a combination of the eyedropper tool okay and then you want to use the paintbrush tool so i'm going to use the brush my brush is way too big, so I'm going to make sure it's a little bit lower there, so about that size. And I'm going to change, this is the key, I'm going to change the hardness down to zero. So, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to make the brush too big and I'm going to make the hardness 100 just to see what you don't want to do. Because this is kind of a, like, if you're just starting and you make a mistake, this is what it would look like. So you want to fill this in, so you select the color with the eyedropper tool. And then you pick your brush and then you go boop and you go, well, that looks terrible, right? Which it does. So what you want to do instead is you want to select the eyedropper tool, pick a color right close to the area that you want to clean up, and then you're going to pick the brush. But here's the key. Make the brush small and make the hardness zero. And what that does is now you can just paint. You can just paint in. Now, if you were to scroll right in and take a look, you'll notice it is cover. It's like makeup on a person, right, with a blemish. But you can select the paint color right next to it. And with a little tiny brushwork, you can just make it kind of fit in. It's like a magic trick, right? So I'll do this piece right here. I'll select the color right next to the blemish. I'll select the paint brush and I'll just kind of paint down on it. And then this is sort of next level. You pick another color, you make your brush slightly larger or slightly smaller, and then you paint next to it as well. So I didn't like that, I was too light. So I'll undo that and I'll just make it a bit darker. And then I'll just go 
boop, and I'll just put a couple spots on there. So you're just kind of dabbing on top of, and you're slowly going through. Now you can make the brush even smaller if you like. You could change it right down to 16, which is barely the width of the blemish in this case. And then what I'll do is just select the eyedropper tool right next to it. And then I'll just run the brush along and just paint right on top of it. The trick is not to paint too much. Now look, we're really zoomed in, right? If I zoom out and I fit on screen, it's almost unrecognizable because we were working in we were working in this area right here and you can see the brush the fold lines almost completely gone already right so you would need to take your time you need to go through and paint along those lines but that's one option uh, for example let's say you wanted to remove the signature which is here on the bottom but you don't want to crop the picture and then you'll select the paint brush the, the eyedropper tool rather, the paintbrush. And then what I typically do is I'll do like a large pass. So I'll make the brush quite large and I'll just paint over it. And then I'll grab another color, slightly less dark. And I'll make the brush now a bit tinier. I'll paint over it again. And then I'll make the brush even lighter. paint over it again and now again you know that we're removing something here right so that's like most people wouldn't notice it so when you fit on screen like if you're looking right at it, you'd be like wait a minute but most people won't notice that now there's another option I'll show you which is if you don't want to do that I'll just go back down to that signature piece and let's say you've got a clean piece of the layer you can just take a little selection of it go edit copy and then edit paste and now you can move this piece around and you can just stick it on top if you want it's an option especially if you do a small little piece so for example let's say you wanted to just remove instead of painting over this you could just take a piece of this really thin edit copy edit paste and then you could just move it on top of it. Now, again, most people, you take more time than I'm doing here, but you could then flush it through using the brushes. You could paint over it, but that's just an option. It depends on the type of photograph. It depends on how much cleaning up you really want to do. If you're making a funny meme for your friend, you're not going to spend three days trying to manufacture the, the next you know, perfect picture. If you're trying to just clean up big chunks of white pieces that are missing, then what you can do, and this is why I like using different layers, is you can just create a layer underneath the picture. Using the eyedropper tool, just pick a color that's nearby and then just fill that layer or just paint. That's usually what I'll do. I'll just paint underneath it. So I'll remove the white with the, with the eraser. So I'll go onto the war poster layer and I'll remove the white. So now it's clear. And then I'll just paint underneath it with a layer. So that's one option. You can also paint, so you can paint over it. You can paint under it. You can even paint right on it. The key when you're painting is to make sure that the hardness is zero. Because if the hardness is 100, it looks ridiculous, right? But if the hardness is zero, then it kind of looks like spray paint and you can actually get away with quite a few effects that when you zoom right out it, it doesn't actually look that outrageous you know when you're looking right at it it's you know like you're staring at like a blemish you're like oh my god there it is but most people won't notice it because they're looking at the overall picture so i hope you found that helpful a couple tips and tricks i do have one bonus tip as well which is if you're not happy with any of these techniques, if you've got a really beat up old photograph and you'd like to make it you know, cleaned up but you just can't, the other option is to go in the opposite direction and just make the entire photograph super vintage-y distressed. And I'll show you how to do that right now. 
Okay, so I'm going to do a whole video about how to do distressed looks on photos and images, but here's just a real quick 30 second overview. So we've got the image, we're not happy with these fold lines. What we can do instead is just double down on the distressed look on it. So what I've got is a couple options. I've got a piece of craft paper I can use, and then I've also got this distressed background that I found, and it's just a PNG file with white on it. I'm just gonna use a dark color just to show you what it looks like. So I'm just moving my layers around here. I'm just showing you that it's this, it's tough to see, like if it's just white on a background, but here I've got a blue background. So here's my distressed look. And what I can do with this look is I can just flip the, distressed piece on top of the actual image. Now it's really hard to see, but if you've got an old vintage photograph with no text on it, this can be an easy option. It just completely covers all of the fold lines. Now, if you'd still like to see the uh, image and, uh, and the text, you can modify this distressed layer by just changing the opacity. You can move the opacity down and you can make it so it's like that, for example. Now, again, I'm not a huge fan of this. This is a last resort, but if you've got a photograph, this can be a nice way to do it. The other option is you can also just have this completely white and completely 100%, and you can just duplicate the actual underlying layer, the, photo, the picture, and you can just move that copy above and then change the opacity on that as well. So it kind of gives you the same effect, but it's a little more white. So here you can move the opacity. It's kind of like you're doubling up the layer. So again, you can always monkey with this stuff. This is just one example, one photograph. But if you're looking at only removing those fold lines, this can be an option. It's not ideal, but it might work. Okay, I hope you found those tips and tricks helpful. Uh, as always, feel free to subscribe to the channel, like, comment, love hearing from you guys. Thank you so, so much for watching.